Dog Smarts is brought to you by Purina Pro Plan Bright Mind, a breakthrough in pet nutrition created to nourish a dog's mind. Is your dog's food feeding your dog's brain? Discover more at brightmindeffect.com. Canines and humans are not just connected by companionship. In fact, we're evolutionarily linked. We're tied together by something far more complex, our brains. Join me as we take a peek into the inner workings of the canine brain through the lens of human cognition. With a mix of stories and interviews from leading psychologists, anthropologists, veterinarians, and dog owners, we're going to tackle questions of memory, word learning, nutrition, and even love. I'm Brian Hare, founder of Dognition and professor at Duke University in cognitive neuroscience. Welcome to Dog Smarts. Today we're going to talk about something we don't really notice until it isn't working anymore, and that's memory. Even trickier, we're going to talk about memory in dogs, which is hard because obviously dogs can't tell you what they remember. Luckily, I have with me one of the top experts in canine cognition who happens to study, among many other things, memory in dogs. Hi, I'm Evan McLean. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Anthropology at the University of Arizona. Evan, great to talk to you. One of the things that I think people often aren't familiar with when they hear the word cognition is the idea that there really are different types, and memory is a wonderful example of this. Are there different kinds of memory in dogs? Certainly, there are. So there are lots of studies looking at, at, at dog memory. Um, there, there are great studies looking at short-term memory, and this is the kind of memory that, um, if you see something hidden in one of two places, you don't need to remember this years later. But for the um, time in between the time you see it hidden and the time that you go search for it, you can keep a, a short-term representation of this in mind. And and dogs have have um, very good uh, short-term memories, so they can remember things that they saw um, moments ago uh, fairly well. Better than cats. Um, well, there's some evidence to suggest that that's true. So you just said dogs are smarter than cats. Uh, I said that you know dog. that every cat <laughs> owner is sending you an email right now. Uh, as someone who's run a lot of these memory experiments with dogs, it's amazing because it seems like uh, you know two minutes, uh, 120 seconds is not a long time. But there have been so many times where we're playing memory games and you know we hide a reward in one of multiple places, and then we sit and we're waiting the two minutes for the dog to make a choice, and the dog goes to search, and and when they pick one of the the multiple options, we don't know whether to tell them they're right or wrong because we've totally <laughs> forgotten, and so we have to. Ask actually pick up the, the, uh, the cup that it's hidden underneath. And, Is there food under there? Oh, yeah. Good job. Good job, doggy. <laughs> so, so 120 seconds can be a long time. It can be a very long time. <laughs> Short-term memory captures events in the immediate past. It's sort of like seeing where an item is hidden and remembering that it was there for a few seconds before searching for it. These are relatively transient memories. They're important for healthy cognitive functioning, but unfortunately they can start to decline as a dog gets older, and it may lead to confusion. Dogs also have long-term memory. They can store lots of different kinds of information on the scale of minutes to years. So think about a family member who travels far away and is gone for several years. Your dog's long-term memory is what allows them to remember that person when they come home. What about different types of memory? You were going to tell me maybe that there's evidence for different types of memory. What about the A, not B task? Have you ever played that with dogs? Yeah, sure. What does that tell us? This is uh, an interesting task. It has a component of memory and it has a component of self-control. So uh, the way that the task works is that there are um, two places that you can hide a reward for the animal. And what you do is initially um, you begin by hiding the reward in one place. And you do this in view of the animal. So it's very simple. You have a cup on the left and a cup on the right. And say you hide the food in the cup on the left. And you do this uh, over and over. And all that has to happen is the dog has to see you hide the food there. And then they have to go uh, search in that location. It's easy as can be. It's a basic memory game. But then what happens is um, suddenly you switch where you're hiding the food. So now on, on one trial, suddenly you show the dog the food and you place it in the cup on the right. So this should be a very, very easy thing. They see where the food is. They know it's on the right. Um, but what happens is this is where a kind of uh, procedural memory can get in the way. Is they have this, they've established this habit. So I type A, 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 A. Then suddenly you show me the correct answer is B. And the question is, do I keep typing A or can I switch to B? That's right. And it's actually a beautiful example of how there can be these different aspects of cognition working against each other because the dog has an updated representation of where the food is. They, they now clearly have seen it on the right, but they have this habitual response that they have to inhibit. And so you have different kinds of cognition working against each other in this situation. Dogs also have procedural memory. That's essentially a kind of memory for motor patterns or how a dog moves through space. It's kind of like how you remember to ride your bike. 
It's something that a dog remembers and can do based on past experiences. And these kinds of memories, they're important in all aspects of a dog's life. Think about an agility competition where dogs have to move through space in so many different ways. That's procedural memory at work there. So do dogs have different types of memory? Absolutely. Short-term, long-term, procedural memory, all of these are things that dogs experience and use to solve problems. Many thanks to Evan McLean, assistant professor in the School of Anthropology at the University of Arizona. Dog Smarts is produced by Panoply Custom Studios and is sponsored by Purina Pro Plan Bright Mind, a breakthrough in pet nutrition created to nourish a dog's mind. Discover more at brightmindeffect.com.